We brought you to where the windows are made. We're at a high performance window factory because of course this is the show for that. But uh, aside from the special stuff that you're gonna see, this will apply to windows of all kinds. As you've heard us say on this show many times, the home is a system. These windows are a system, a very cool system. So we're gonna go back into the factory and see how they're made. So as we walk through the factory, we're gonna see a few of the key stations that make the window as high performance as it is. Um, we're going to start in the cut room where all of the lineals of material come into the factory. Um, so we are either painting them or we're sorting them by color because the fiberglass can be painted, UPVC cannot. You'll see the difference between the two products is it's quite striking because as you manufacture the fiberglass windows, there's a lot of pieces and parts that hold the whole system together. And as it's going through the machine, these very fine pieces of glass, they're sort of like horsehair, they get pulled through and formed with resins then heated up to be thermally set. Whereas in the vinyl window, because it's not a thermoset material, it's still soft, we just have one machine that clamps down all four corners and heat welds it together. So there's a lot fewer steps in, in the UPVC product. So this is a UPVC frame. You can see there's multiple engineered chambers inside of it. We have insulation and air cavities. And then we also have ladders that hold the screws to provide structural strength. So here at our factory, we don't actually melt the sand and float the glass. There is a factory nearby that provides the stock sheets of glass to us. And then we assemble our glass units. These are the gas expansion chambers. Okay. So we ship when we go higher elevation or lower elevation. We put a balloon on it so that it's, like it's going up in, in elevation, the gas wants to escape. And as we go down in elevation, it wants to suck the gas in. So We'll overfill the balloon when it's going down and we'll leave it flat when it's going up. But you can't take one that was going to Aspen and sell it to Florida and stuff? Uh, not without that tube still on it. So one of the important things about the system of this window is that it's filled with gas. There's a couple different gases that are used, argon, xenon, and krypton. They're heavier than air, which make it a higher performance window. Here you've got the gas coming in through these little ports, and up here you've got two sniffers. And that helps them know when the window is full of gas and they can stop it, put in one of those balloons, seal up the window and be ready to go. We have a few basic constructions of glass, one being true triple pane where you've got three layers of glass substrate. Most of the insulation is coming from that gas fill and from the low E coatings that stop heat from going through the, the window. So the low E coating that keeps the heat bleed from radiating through the window, as I understand it, it's directional, right? So I can have one coating of low E if I want to stop heat from bleeding out of my house, but then I need another one if I want to stop heat from bleeding in with the sun. Is that, how does that work with the window manufacturing process? Yes, so the, well, the most important thing is within a multi-chamber IG is to have one low E facing each chamber. So they're essentially insulating those chambers. So usually you want a solar selective low E coating on the outside layer. So that's gonna do the filtering of your solar heat gain. And then you'll put your, your low E coatings on the inside. What we feature most is a suspended coated film unit. So we're taking two pieces of glass and sandwiching them around a piece of mylar film. And you'll see that the mylar film is still a bit wrinkly. The key to pulling those wrinkles out and stretching the film in the oven. So we have a big blue oven that we heat up to 220 degrees. We cook it for about an hour and it stretches out and you can't see the film anymore. We love this product because it is super lightweight and there's lower embodied energy in the unit than with true triple pane glass. So on casement and awning windows, when you're cranking them out, if we can reduce the amount of weight on that hardware that uh, might sag if it's left open for too long, then we can prolong the life of the hardware. The third benefit to film, the part that I love most, is that the, the film does carry a low E coating on it. So usually in triple pane construction, you don't coat the center pane. It's just very hard to get through the glass wash and get super clean before you're making the unit. So when we have the film as the center pane, we can actually get better performance than a triple pane window. But also if you have a skylight or you're going into an impact hurricane zone, you have to have laminated glass. If 
I had a triple pane window and I put laminate, I lose my low E because that's where the low E's are on the inside and outside. With suspended film, because my low E's on the middle, I can do anything I want with that inner pane. I can go impact or blast resistance or terrorism force protection. Uh, really, the, the full range of options, there's over 216,000 combinations of low E, gas, glass, film, and spacer that we can make. And I, it's really fun to model them because we like to have our customers say, I need a U value that's this and a visible light that's this, and can you get there? And usually we can. And that's, that's all due to the film being the carrier of the low E.